Welcome to today's 3D print. Another printer review, the FL Sun QQ Cricut, a Delta printer that might surprise you. So, I actually built this printer almost a month ago. And I haven't been able to make a video because that was one of the videos that was destroyed by my bad lav mic setup that wrecked a nice solid chunk of my videos <laughs> nice so uh, i might have a time lapse if i do i'll insert that into this video so this is the first delta printer that has impressed me now that's not saying a lot because i don't have very many deltas i think i have four and um this is the only one i can actually use <laughs> well okay i can use them all but to varying degrees of usefulness and success they all work but this one actually works well. It is from FL Sun. It's called the QQ Cricket. And it has a fixed heat bed. It does not um, have any adjustments because this one has automatic bed leveling. I have not stuck it down in case I ever need to do it again. Although from what I understand, you won't need to ever do it again. Um, the bed surface has a metal conductive mesh on it. And that metal conductive mesh connects around the corner of the bed to circuitry. So, and there's also an additional wire going to the effector head. And when that wire touches this wire via electrical contact from the nozzle to the mesh on the bed, it knows it's touched the bed. And so when you first turn this printer on, it does a automatic, um, you run it through an automatic bed leveling sequence where it touches points on the bed to get your mesh for your bed level and um well i thought this was another doa because i could not for the life of me get it to do it it just wouldn't do it um i'll get more into that later it ended up being a ridiculously simple solution so this printer is actually fascinating it is a largely pre-assembled delta which is actually really cool <laughs> So when this thing comes in the box, you leave the base in the box. You don't remove the base from the box. The effector head and all of its attachments are sitting there already attached and just laying out in the bed. You take the top and the sides out of the box. You take the rails out of the box. You leave the bottom in the box. You arrange the effector assembly over it like a spider. And then you install your rods, install your top. Um, after you slide the, the rods through the effector bearing units here and into the base, screw it together, and then you pull the whole thing out of the box assembled. This is a Delta printer that you could build in less than an hour, possibly less than 30 minutes. It's basically the equivalent of a CR-10, meaning it's mostly assembled. You just have to put a couple of things together. It's a little more involved than that just because there's more screws. It's not harder, there's just more screws. You know, you have two here, two here. Um, you have the screws on top which grab a hold of these belts. So the pulley wheel is already attached to the belts. You slide it through the top, and there's a hole on the top here, and a square hole that receives the unit that you slide up through the top, and you spin the nut on it. And when you tighten down the nut, it pulls that unit and tightens the belt assembly. Genius. A, um, it's all metal, very little 3D printing. Uh, at this part here, I believe, is 3D printed. Yep, that the, the uh, feeder is a 3D printed. And there's also a couple of cosmetic 3D printed parts. For example, in here, there's actually um, guards over the pulley wheels. So you have the pulley wheel that has the belt going around it. Then you have a guard around that, which keeps the belt from falling off in shipment. So that you don't have to assemble the belts. They're already around the pulleys and ready to go. You just pull them taut, feed them through here, tighten up the nuts, and you're done. It really is that easy. It's very, very impressive. So what was the problem? It would not do the bed leveling sequence. It would not come down and do the dot, 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 dot. And I couldn't figure out why. I mean, and you can't do anything until you do that. You, you're done. You can't do anything until it does that leveling sequence. Well, here's where I got to sample FL Sun's tech support, their customer support relations. And Dave, thank you. <laughs> he spent like two and a half hours on Skype with me, working with me on this. 
Uh, thankfully, I am, you know, I have a, a multimeter and I could give him good information. Um, it turns out that during assembly at the factory, someone had accidentally reversed one wire, just these two wires, one wire each, they'd reversed them. And because they'd reversed those wires, the circuit that's supposed to provide five volts to complete this contact was turned off. I guess if it detects a fault, it switches and turns off. I noticed that when I put the probes on the contacts, it read five volts, but when I plugged it in, it stopped reading five volts, and the contacts that weren't reading five volts were now reading five volts. So it's like a fail-safe in the firmware or something like that. Um, we eventually figured that out. He had me unplug this, unplug this, unplug this, you know, diagnosing and seeing, okay, try this, see what happens. Two and a half hours, just have one wire reversed. I flipped those two wires, boom, the whole system came alive and worked. It went along, it did its bed leveling, I then slapped on the build tack copy it comes with, the fake build tack, and it worked. Out of the box. A Delta printer that worked out of the box. <laughs> I'll give them a pass on the wire because that's just, that's, somebody goofed up. At the factory, somebody just had the wires in the crimping tool wrong and it just went into the plug backwards. So it went one and two instead of two and one. And, um... Uh, so that's a, it's just a QC fail. It's a, I give a pass on that. Their support was wonderful. They did not know I was a reviewer. I am always very careful not to let people know, if at all possible, that I am a reviewer because they might give me preferential treatment if they know I'm a reviewer. And that is literally worthless to you guys because you guys won't get that preferential treatment. So I had to be careful with that. But no, he was great. He walked me through the whole thing, got it all situated, and we deduced what it was and fixed it. After that, perfect. I haven't had a single problem with this printer at all. Let me get you some prints. So, I did my sample suite of prints. I did my Marvin, I did my Benchy, did my Rocket. They all came out fine, no problems. I was very impressed. I didn't have to adjust anything. I didn't have to change anything. And once I got it programmed, that was it. I will have my profile in my link down below with profiles for this printer. Um, first print. I said, screw it, I'm the, go big. <laughs> so I just said, I took the sample filament and I just printed the bays as big as I could print it. This printer has a very big print volume, 260 diameter and 370 tall. Yeah, I think it's 370 millimeters tall. So it's almost CR10 size. I guess you could call this the CR10 of Delta printers. It's that 334 build volume roughly. A little smaller than that, but it's close. Um, I would love to have a 445 Delta printer. That's probably a little monster. That's probably the one that would be that size, G-Max sized. And um, this was the filament that came with it, which was okay. Wasn't the greatest filament in the world. So I decided to put some nicer filament into it. Some of my transparent purple. And that came out beautiful. As you can see, I got the lighting good now. Look at that. Nice, beautiful first layer. No problem. I am very impressed. I don't know if this is watertight. Nope, not watertight. <laughs> if you could blow air through it, it's not going to hold water. And then I decided to start experimenting. I tried to print out a pair of the glasses, and I tried it with ABS, and it actually worked great. It stuck down fine. It did not try to peel off. This thing can get very hot. But ABS did not like bridging. Yeah, it does not bridge, period. It just... I, I now realize that with doing my other prints, that ABS does not bridge well. It's very unhappy about it. When you have a completely unsupported bridge, you can get away with that with PLA. You can't with ABS. But what it did print before it got to the bridging part looks great. It stuck down fine. The quality is good. Nice, clean prints. I got no complaints. I was hoping the ABS would be a little more flexible, and it is. But printing these glasses with ABS is going to be tough. So I printed the Thwack Hammer. You're going to actually, you're going to see this in a video on Friday. Um, maybe Friday, might be later, depending on what I get from Murph. But I printed the Thwack Hammer in ABS on the QQ Cricut. No problems with warping. No problems with sticking down. A little bit of brim. I had a small brim on here, five perimeters. I did use support for the bridge here because ABS does not like um, bridging without support, but with the support, as you can see, it bridged just fine. But yeah, nice. 
I now have my black hammer. I will be using this printer more. It is going to be a very well used printer of mine. Really. <laughs> the one time I forget to silence the stinking phone, that's when it decides to, you know, of course, now we're going to do a message while I'm doing a video. Um, heated bed gets to 100 degrees, no problem. Um, color touch screen. Um, simple power on off button here. SD card is full size. It comes with a 2 gigabyte Kingston SD card, and that actually looks like an original. Standard C13 power cable, um, full size A male USB plug, and it also is supposed to have Wi Fi, although I have not played with that yet. The effector is nicely designed. You have the cable with an aircraft connector going right through the center here, it pops up the top, and then that cable comes around and goes down the side. So this goes around to the top of the printer, goes through with a cable connector like the one, like the screw on connectors on the back of the CR10. And then that comes down into here with the Bowden tube for the printer. So it is a very long Bowden tube. Um, the effector end is um, it's metal, and this cage is metal. There are two cooling fans, as well as the primary fan with a proper grill on it. And you have your two ducts for your cooling here. It's nice. Carbon rods. It was completely assembled. I even like the touch with the little logo there. You know, it's, it's nice. Be proud of your brand. If you got a good brand, be proud of it. Mark it well. Um, the touchscreen is responsive. The operating system is responsive. I like it. I'm impressed. This printer is pretty cool. And it actually works. <laughs> I finally have a Delta I can use. <laughs> I love the kinematics of Deltas, but they're such a pain in the butt because they're not... They're hard to intrinsically understand like a Cartesian printer. Because on a Cartesian, your X, your Y, and your Z are completely separate from each other. On this printer, you cannot move X without also moving Y and Z. You have to move all three in a coordinated, um, choreographed dance in order to make it print. Because you have a single point with three arms. Well, if I push this one arm, this is going to come down, but it's also going to move sideways and tilt. Okay? So if I were to take this and push it from one corner, it's not going to do this. It's going to do this because these two arms are holding it. So in order to do this kind of a movement, you know, all three arms have to move up and down together in a choreographed fashion in order to make a part move on a plane when it's connected by three-point attachment to the rails. So it's math intensive. <laughs> it's a very math intensive printer. It's not a simple X go here. If you want to do X plus 10, you're going to have to do this rail plus or minus something, this rail plus or minus something, and this rail plus or minus something, and the combination of those movements will give you the X plus 10. So the kinematics are complex and the software is complex, which is why this printer is so wonderful. It's pre-assembled. You don't have to attune or adjust anything. You don't have to worry about arm lengths. They're all assembled. You don't have to worry about alignment. It's all assembled. You just bolt this bugger together, screws in the top here, this um, shrouds screw on and stiffen the sides, and that's it. You tell it to, the big thing, the big thing is the automatic mesh leveling. That is the big thing. I will never buy a Delta that does not have auto leveling. It's just, it's not like a regular printer. You can't, it's not as simple as adjusting screws to adjust the height of the bed. Because of the kinematics of how a Delta works, when it tries to move horizontally, if it's not programmed correctly, you end up with the problem I had on the ANA A4, where the print describes a bowl instead of a plane. So as you tell it to do X plus 10 and it makes the motion, it's not a correct motion. So you end up with a print bed that's actually bowl shaped. So when you get it properly leveled on the outside, it's either too high or too low as it moves to the outer edge. And when you move to the, or if you get the outer edge correct, it's too high in the center or too low in the center, depending on if it's a convex or a concave bowl. Um, the automatic mesh level where it probes the entire bed creates that mathematical plane that then gets programmed into the firmware so that when it does X plus 10, it knows where to move and knows how to move these three rails in order to give you that proper motion. So I will probably, unless I get heavy into the DIY part of this, I will probably never buy a Delta again that does not have. Um, automatic mesh bed leveling to take care of the mathematics of that initial critical function of a Delta printer. Uh, this was sent to me by Gearbest, by the way. I did not buy this. Um, 
I will do an update video as I print more and I discover how to use the Wi-Fi. Um, I'm impressed with the printer. I'm impressed with the hardware. I'm impressed with the quality control. And I am most impressed with the company itself and their customer support. I hope that they did not realize that I was a reviewer. They seem to simply ask for a good rating on Amazon, so I think they just thought I bought this printer on Amazon, and they were just looking to, you know, get a good rating for their custom from their customers. So I don't think they knew I was a reviewer, although they probably do now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I only have one complaint, and I hope FL Sun will fix this. I hope they are responsive and will fix this. I'm going to pick you guys up. I hope this doesn't go bad. This is horrible. It's a spool holder that's this flimsy metal bracket with a um, metal pipe that goes through two holes in the bracket. I have tape on here to keep it from falling off. It's that much of a pain in the butt. Horrible. Um, I'm going to drill two holes and put a standard spool holder, like an Ender style spool holder on here. I really, it's just so flimsy and janky. Uh, I don't like that spool holder at all. That, that's just, yeah. Um, if they take any advice from me, take this advice, change that, just put... Use a standard Ender 2 style spool holder with a plastic spool. It's just so much better. This, that is, I hate those janky, fiddly spool holders. <laughs> but beyond that, absolutely impressed. I am going to give this printer a tentative safe to buy. Of course, I'm going to have to use it for months and put hundreds and hundreds of hours of prints through it before I'll give it my true blessing. But um, that doesn't mean much. That's just... The way I do it, I'm not going to tell somebody, hey, this printer is the cat's meow, and I've only put three prints through it. <laughs> that would be a disservice to my viewers. But um, initially, I'm impressed. I don't see anything that spooks me. I don't see anything that scares me, besides the Delta itself being scary. But yeah, I'm happy. I'm very, very happy. I look forward to making a lot of interesting prints with this. I can't wait to print a really tall nose cone with this. That's going to be fun. Because deltas are also cool because you can film them. Because the bed doesn't move. So the print doesn't move. Just the effector head moves. So you get a nice clean time lapse picture as the object grows right in front of your view. And I love that. That's cool. So expect to see more from me on this printer. You guys have a great day.